Welcome this morning. We're praying. And as you're tuning in, you know what to do. Invest, invite, and involve. And so, Father, we pray this morning that your will be done. We thank you, Father, that you are establishing your will in all the earth. We thank you that you are establishing your purpose in our morning and in our day. And so, Lord, as we come this morning, we pray for families. We pray for children. We pray for mothers. We pray for fathers. We lift up the family today and we cover your family in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that you would move by your power and by your authority. Lord, we just lift up every person uh, that uh, uh, and that has somebody connected to them. We lift up Angela Thomas, her uncle. Uh, we pray for him in Jesus' name in New York. We pray for those that are in uh, really a serious condition. So, Lord, we lift up all of the family and friends in New York. We lift up everybody that we're connected to. Lord, we pray, Father, for a covering. We pray for uh, the McLean family in New York. We pray, Father God, that you would be over them, be with them. We pray for your strength. Lord, I lift up leaders and pastors and those that are in New York that are praying. Lord, I thank you for the body of Christ that is gathering and praying. And Lord, as we pray, we pray by faith and know that, Lord, you're working and moving. And so we come to you. We submit to you. We come under your divine authority. And Father, we thank you for the prophetic words that have been released. Now, Lord, we pray for the knowledge on how to pray and how to how to move and even on how to to make decisions in this hour. We thank you, Father, uh, for you giving us the insight. We thank you, Father, for giving us the understanding. And Lord, I just pray for someone today um, that may need to be strengthened. Uh, Lord, I just pray for strength for all of us, for our families, for our children. Uh, we pray for the class of 2020. Uh, graduating high school seniors. Lord, we lift up teachers this morning. We lift up those that are, are still going to work. We pray for those in the military, the armed forces. We pray for those uh, that are on the front lines. And Lord, we thank you, Father, uh, for those that are gathering in prayer. Lord, I lift up every preacher, every minister, every apostle, prophet, pastor um, that is proclaiming the gospel. But Lord, we thank you that there is more uh, than these broadcasts. We thank you that there is more than just digital connecting. Father, we submit to you and Lord, we come under your authority and we pray, Father, that in these these next uh, six to seven days that, Lord, you would do something new. Lord, We as we come, Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that we will have a heart and a spirit of repentance. Lord, I pray that we would turn from our ways. You said, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and uh, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Lord, we pray this morning. Lord, I pray, Lord God, for every person um, that is listening, that is watching and tuning in. Lord, we thank you for uh, this opportunity uh, to lift your people up. And we pray right now that you would break, that you would destroy, that you would nullify, that you would cancel every yoke of bondage. Lord, we thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but you have given us a spirit of power love and a sound mind father i thank you today lord as we pray we know that lord your faith is rooting us i thank you that our faith is rooting us and that as we're rooted and grounded in you we're rooted and grounded in your word so let your word be a light to our path and we thank you father we pray for those that are believing for healing god i thank you for the many that you have healed uh, there is very little uh, celebration or information on the healing that is taking place. So we thank you for many that you are healing. You're healing. There is no minor or no major impact of this season. And so we thank you, Father, for being a healer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Again, want to welcome you this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you for being a part of this broadcast. It is truly a privilege and an honor uh, to come into your life as today is day two of our Proverbs, 31 days of Proverbs. I want to pray. That as you hear, that as you listen, that you will begin to apply. We know that in this hour, we all need wisdom. We all need understanding. We all need insight. And so as we do uh, trust in the Lord, we know that in his word, uh, it gives us guidance and direction for this season. Uh, we've got to know how to make decisions. You've got to know how to make calls. You've got to know what you can refinance and what you can't. You've got to know what God has done away with and what he's doing new in your life. Uh, this is not a uh, this is not strange to heaven or even to God. We know that he always has a plan in a Selah moment. We know he always has a plan when he says, be still 
and know. And so we pray right now that you will be still and know. And so in these Proverbs, we just want to bring you a scripture from each chapter each day um, that will bring you into a new dimension of knowing that you would have a, do, a new uh, expression and new revelation of what God is saying to you. Sometimes we can read the scripture or read the Bible, but a lot of times we don't understand what God is really trying to get into us uh, for this season. And so thank you so much. Uh, for joining us and connecting with us on this day. Let's go to the scripture in um, Proverbs chapter 2 this morning. Uh, we're going to read Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6. Uh, and I'm going to read that from the New King James Version. A very familiar passage, but want to use this as a thought of meditation today. It says, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. I'm going to say it one more time for the Lord gives wisdom. He gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Uh, just want to give you for a thought this morning uh, as a title or a understanding uh, so the source for end time wisdom. Uh, understanding God is the source for end time wisdom. And if you know if you know that we are in the end times, if you have that understanding, if you believe that we are in the end times, then what is the source? Just because I'm going to be careful on that thought. We must know what the source. And so we've got to understand this is the season for seeking the Lord. He said, ask, knock and seek. All right. How do you how do you begin to uh, position yourself? In an end time era, uh, right? We know that these times that we're in, whatever long that it takes, whatever time that it takes, whatever time span that it takes, the Bible says, no man know the day or the hour. No man know the day or the hour. And so with this scripture, Proverbs chapter two, verse six, it says it very clearly for the Lord gives wisdom. Number one, you've got to know in time, uh, uh, number one, an end time source of wisdom is only from the Lord. I'm going to say it again. It is only from the Lord. It is only from the King of Kings. Even prophets only know in part. There is no one man or no woman that knows the totality of what God is doing. And so you've got to understand this in this hour. You've got to know that he is the sort. There is no book. There is no, no video. There is nothing that you can even touch tangible or have access tangible in this earth realm, in this environment, in this season without the Lord. And so it's very important that you understand who is the source for end time wisdom. End time wisdom comes from the Lord. We know that because he he, he tells us from Genesis to Revelation and that we know it's in his word. And, and what happens is wisdom can't be bought. Wisdom can't be manipulated. You can't jump, shout, yell, or enforce God to give you wisdom. Wisdom is given freely. So we know in time wisdom is something that you do not have to invest in. In time wisdom does not require you to pay $9.99, $99.99. It is not something you're going to get in a webinar, a seminar, or online teaching. It is not something that you can even get in one service um, that broadcasts. In time, wisdom is not going to come through the totality of online messengers. In time, wisdom is given. It is given by the Lord. I want you to get that in your spirit. All of the wisdom that you have was given to you. Have you ever done something you didn't know how to do, but you knew all you did was take a moment and pause and you let the Holy Spirit, you let the Spirit of God, you let the Lord lead you into a decision that you make that ends up being profitable a lot of times it's not your intellect it's see you got to understand a lot of times it is not your intellect it is not where you grew up at it is not uh, uh how much money you make it is not uh, how many books you read but you got to understand it it is given by the lord i want to i want to emphasize that today Oh my gosh, the wisdom that you're going to need in this end time will not come from man. Man does not know what to do. The best doctor in the land does not know what to do. 
the best educators in the land does not have the resources. It has never been written in this time, but in the Lord's book, the Bible, the biblical Bible, the word of God, whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, whether there are different versions or not, you've got to understand this. The Lord is your source and he gives wisdom. He doesn't sell wisdom. <laughs> he doesn't make you work for wisdom. It's given to you. The thing that you've got to understand, if you're going to have a, if you're going to understand wisdom in these end times, you must ask. You have not because you ask not. Prayer and fasting is a position. It's a posture of asking for wisdom. There, it doesn't come to you to give you more power. You don't fast and pray for more power. You know how many people have fasted and prayed and they still lack power? Power to overcome sin. Power to, to be humble. Power to love. You see? And so you've got to understand the wisdom that comes from the Lord. Where does it come from? It comes, the scripture says, from his mouth. I want to I want to stay right here because this is where God says from the beginning and the end. He says, I'm alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. So we know when he created man, he laid Adam down. And the first thing he did, he gave him mouth to mouth resuscitation. He formed him from his dirt. He formed him out of the particles of the earth. He looked at him and went down and breathed into his mouth. So we knew that from the beginning of the time, the spirit the spirit that proceeded from God's mouth into Adam gave Adam life. You've got to understand this. Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. He didn't come into earth for us to just be prosperous financially. That is great. Yes, you will prosper. Beloved, the, the Lord desires that you prosper in all things. But I'm going to tell you this. It is his word. I, I wrote it down. Matthew 4, 4. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so this wisdom, we see it here in the Old Testament and we see it in the New. And so when you take the latter and the former, you bring it together, you have life. In other words, you have breath. In other words, you have you can overcome. You don't overcome just by saying, I overcome by the blood, but you've got to know what that word means. And you've got to be able to understand the ruach, the breathe word, the breath of life that breathes upon dry bones, that breathes upon dead situations. And so when he says from his mouth, right? In other words, uh, are you understanding that everything that we function in, in the spirit, even in the natural, it comes from the mouth of God. Let there be light. The sun, the sun is still shining. You got to understand this. When the word of God speaks and it comes from his mouth, I'm not talking about a mouthpiece. A mouthpiece for God can be a prophet. But when it comes from the mouth of God, it's the fullness of God. It's the totality of God. It's the eternity of God. In other words, it's the finished work of God. It's not a piece of God, but it's the fullness of who he is. He's a good father. He gives good gifts. But when God speaks, it is the fullness of who he is. And so everything about God's word is the totality of your life. You want to know how it's going to end? Let me tell you, beloved, this is how these end times are going to end. According to God's word, not according to man's plans. Man can have many plans. But God has the final word. Are you getting this today? I pray that you're learning something. He says from his mouth. Look, Matthew 4, 4. Out of, out of, listen, man shall not live by bread alone. Right? But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. Write this scripture down. Job 22, 22. I love this. Job 22, 22. Let's look at what Job says about the mouth of God. He says, receive. Please instruction from his mouth. Job begs. He says, please receive instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. In other words, your heart is the warehouse. It's the storehouse. It's the place that no matter what you see, no matter what you do, when the word gets into your heart, you cannot sin against him. When the word gets into your heart, you begin to have life on another dimension. In other words, it's not carnal love. It's spiritual love. It is love that will establish who he is. And Job said it again. He said, please, in his instruction, receive his instructions from his mouth. 
I want you to know this, beloved. This is what Job is saying. Trust what the word is saying to you. What God's word has said to you, it has not changed. It has not given uh, a, a, another direction, but it has established something in your heart. It's either going to establish your heart or it's going to convict your heart. Now, I want you to understand this. He laid Adam down. He breathed into him. He gave Adam life through his word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word in the beginning in first John. And you got to understand this in the book of John, John chapter one. He makes it plain. John says in the beginning was the word. The word is everlasting. The word is the same. The word hasn't changed. The word has been around longer than Methuselah. You got to understand this. The word has been around longer than the earth. Oh my gosh. When when we get the revelation that the coronavirus doesn't just submit to you as a human, but it submits to the word of God. The coronavirus must bow, must stop, must cease because of the word of God. The word of God tells us very clearly, many people are leaving here. Yes, I don't understand all of the facts, but I do understand this. The word of God does not lie. He is not a man that he should lie. And we cannot minimize the word of God. When you get the word from God's mouth, the words that I'm speaking is only in part. But when he gives you a word from his word, from his mouth in the fullness of who he is, how many of you know it's already done? That's why when Jesus was, watch this, when he was saying to Satan, he was saying, it is written. In other words, it has already been filed. It's already in the books. It's already been sealed. It's already been established. I'm going to tell you this. When the word of God, oh, this proverb is good. For the Lord gives wisdom, but from his mouth, his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. I'm going to wrap this up right here. I want you to understand this. It, from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. There are two things that God gives us. We see it here from his mouth, knowledge and understanding. My people perish because of a lack, a lack of knowledge. What is that scripture saying? It's, be, it's because of a lack of God's words. When you understand the word that comes from his mouth, it will never have you ignorant. I'm going to say it again. The word that comes from the mouth of the Lord will never have you ignorant. It will never have you blind. It will never have you confused. He is not the author of confusion. Confusion is, uh, watch this, confusion is a chapter that is written by a dysfunctional author or an anti-author. Let me say it again. Uh, confusion is a chapter that is written by an anti-author. In other words, it's not forwarded. <laughs> it's limited. It's stopped. Listen, when somebody writes a book and it's forwarded by somebody in other words it's approved it's advanced it's validated but when you when you've got an anti-author an anti-author doesn't want you to finish an anti-author doesn't punctuate properly an anti-author an anti will misspell are you on you getting the revelation what i'm saying he if he is the author and the finisher of your faith then you've got to know what he's begun in you he will complete it and so that's why the words from his mouth it must come by understanding that it is knowledge and understanding the words that the Lord give us in scripture, the words that the Lord speaks to us in spirit, it is for knowledge and understanding. It is not for you to matriculate at the highest level of education. It is not for you to go to a service. You only get it in part. It is for you to understand when you understand it is for knowledge and understanding what comes from his mouth. We talk about the sons of Issachar. But I want to talk about the sons of this day for the earth is groaning. The earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. And so when you understand sonship is by what you speak, you speak what you hear your father say. In other words, this is the hour that you've got to judge what I'm even saying. You've got to know that what I'm saying, you judge it by what the word says. And this is very important. If anybody's speaking and there is no word, you've got to question where they're speaking from because they're not speaking from knowledge and understanding. I don't want to get into that this morning. Are you with me today? Listen, I want you to write, write these two thoughts down and we're going to finish up. The word knowledge. The word knowledge, in other words, it means skill or awareness. The Hebrew word for knowledge is skill 
or awareness. I believe that God has caused us to be on pause so that he can give us skills and that he can make us aware. Awareness. Having an awareness of the times is very important. Having an awareness of the hour is very important. Having an awareness in what God is saying to us is very important. When you say, God, I, I want to make, I want to establish an awareness today, an awareness in my, in my knowledge. In other words, it's, it's one thing to have knowledge, but it's another thing to lack awareness. When you have awareness, in other words, you will be as wise as a serpent and harmful as a dove. Are you with me this morning, this afternoon, wherever you're watching from? Listen, the word, the word understanding it, in the Hebrew, it means intelligence. And so when I th thought about this, the Lord just really said this. He said, S-I-A, spiritual intelligence awareness, spiritual intel awareness. It's like the CIA, but he said, this is the hour for S-I-A spiritual intelligent awareness in other words what he's doing by his spirit he is giving us intelligence to make us aware of the times if you are going to understand he gives you in other words what he gives is the report it says whose report will you believe I will believe the report of the Lord. When you believe the report, we will believe the report of the Lord. The report is his SIA, spiritual intelligence awareness. It's what's given to you. When when a report is gathered, this is what I, this is what you got to understand. Joshua and Caleb had a report. Oh, it looks like there's giants in the land. It looks like it's it's impossible to defeat. But when you are understanding spiritual intelligence awareness spiritual intelligence awareness comes from the mouth of God it was the mouth of God that gave the children of Israel the promise but it was only two that had a revelation of the promise or well, I'm going to tell you this is the hour that the remnant of God will only have a revelation of his promises the promises of God are yes and amen when you understand the promises of God are yes and amen it establishes knowledge and understanding and it gives you the intelligence that you can overcome it gives you the insight that you would know what to do in other words that insight will give you skill there is skill inside of you some of you you've been in a season of where things have been watered down now God is saying I'm speaking from my mouth and I'm going to give you the fullness of who I am the fullness of his power we haven't begun to even see the power of God we haven't even begun to see the glory of God but the time that he's bringing us into beloved it is going to us established right here in this scripture knowledge and understanding that you will know how to move that you will know how to think that you will know how to synchronize with the will and power of God are you getting this this morning I want to pray for you as we uh, go off as we sign off I want to pray for you that you come into this this is for all of us let me tell you there's there as a leader as a spiritual leader as someone that is really really depending on the spirit of God now we must be led and we must be led by the spirit of truth the Bible says it very clearly you will know the truth and the truth will make you free how does it make you free through knowledge and understanding and so when you know that knowledge is skill that knowledge is a place watch this it's a place that makes you aware are you aware of the times we, people say these are the last days well we know these are the last days but are you aware of what God is saying to you and are you getting it from his is the intelligence from his mouth or is it from a second hand mouth is it from news that has been twisted or covered or is even fake Father, we thank you and we bless you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to share this word. We thank you for this Proverbs, this word of wisdom that lets us know the word is from you and it is given by you for the power of knowledge and understanding. Lord, I pray for every person that is watching and tuning in and we pray that you will bless them, that you encourage them. Lord, we pray that you will move them in this hour as many decisions are being made. Father, we seek you for the knowledge and understanding of this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you've been blessed by this broadcast, make sure you share it with someone. Make sure 
you invite someone to join this revelation moment and go to our YouTube page subscribe if you're on YouTube thank you so much make sure if you're watching this video uh, go down to the link click subscribe and make sure you click the bell so that you can be notified when we upload videos and even go live if you've been blessed by this broadcast again let us know email us at prayer uh, prayer at the branch wc.org and we want to pray with you we want to pray for you we want to hear testimonies of how God has been a blessing to you and we appreciate you we honor you for allowing us to take the time to come into your life on this day again stay tuned for with us tomorrow we'll be on day three of this 31 day of proverbs getting wisdom and getting understanding for these end times all right be blessed be lifted and be loved as always we declare over you that your giants are defeated your red seas are open and your Jericho walls are coming down. This is your revelation moment. Have a blessed and prosperous day. Bye for now. Shalom. Shalom.